Well, here we are, uh, wiring again. This is gonna be about wiring. Uh, basically, I'm trying to determine where I'm gonna put my Barra PCM. On the Aussie down under Barra's, the PCM is right about where my brake master cylinder is on the passenger side of the car, which is the driver's side in America. Okay, so really don't want my PCM mounted anywhere here. Um, just would like to be able to get to it easily. Um, my wiring harness is a certain length. Let's take a look at that. Okay. I need this wiring to fit somewhere where I can do something useful with it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to find a spot in the, I'm thinking passenger compartment or the driver's compartment for this wiring. Um, this runs to the PCM, obviously. This is the PCM, and it's not a huge run. Not a long distance, okay? So, uh, and I don't want to go and extend all of this wiring. That, that could be a lot of fun for nothing, okay? So if you look where that is roughly here, that's why I'm thinking possibly in this area. I'd hate to cut a new hole, but if I have to, I have to. And I would like to have my wiring extend to a spot where I can get to the PCM easily to do things like, I don't know, troubleshoot. <laughs> Just talking from experience. Um, so that's where we're at. Uh, but for first start, I'm just gonna lay that PCM probably right here on top of the brake master cylinder and I'll be able to get to it easily. You know, um, alternatively, I mean, these, this is me thinking out loud. Uh, I've thought, hey, you know, uh, that thing might just fit right there. Like, I, I'd just, I'll just build a panel over it and hide the whole mess, you know? That would hide my Hydroboost plumbing, my brake master cylinder, who the heck knows what else, you know? It'd be kind of cool. But, uh, yeah. I really don't want that there for a host of reasons. First of all, I'd like to be able to see my Hydroboost plumbing. Even though it's nasty looking, it's just, if you need to fix anything, having the computer in the way could be a problem. Huh. And it's Grand Central Station there anyway. So do I want to make it more Grand Central Station? Probably not. Um, there's that. There's the inputs to this thing, which in previous videos I've discussed, they're labeled. This, this red wire is the ignition wire, okay? This is my start wire, all right? So when you turn the key to on, this goes live. And when you turn the key to start, this goes live. Now. Um, I'm probably going to tap uh, the fuse box input wire for this ignition wire. And that's going to go through the fuse box that I set up in the, uh, where did you go? Can't see it. Hang on a minute. It's probably on the floor here in this god awful tangle of parts. but. Basically, the old airbag compartment can go through there, and I'll have a fuse box for things like um, gauges and so on. Okay, so ignition, start and run, two wires there. Uh, I'll want a dedicated ground that goes all the way back to the negative battery cable for this guy. So it'll run all the way back along the car here to the battery. All right. And there's a reason for this. The PCM really needs to know the voltage of the car, not what it is at the front of the car, what it is at the battery. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, this is a constant wire. That guy, I can make a, a beeline to the actual battery post through a fuse. Um, I've got a, what do we got here? It says reverse light. But I think that's our, I gotta check. That might be our uh, switch to uh, activate the, the solenoid for a manual. I've gotta to talk to Bill Hooten. Uh, I've got a fan one and a fan two for a two speed fan. That's what those guys are. And then finally my fuel pump wire. This is, again, none of these wires for fan and for fuel, okay, are, they, they're pretty darn thin. They are for a solenoid, or for a solenoid. I say it right, a relay, okay? Which, although it looks nasty, 
I've got one for my fuel, okay? So the input wire for this guy will run all the way from the front of the car to that, all right? So this is all the wiring kind of stuff that you kind of have to think about. But if you're paying attention, it's not too terribly bad. Now, there are two inputs off of the car that I really want to talk about now. Um, well, the water temp sensor, that's a third one. This is the guy that tells the stock PCM how warm the engine is and will light up the fan, okay? And in, in a V6 car, it's a one-speed fan. And in a GT, it's a two-speed fan. And I happen to have a two-speed fan that I'm only using one speed of, and that's in my Coyote Swap. So I may just swap the fan out of it so that I can wire up both fans in this. Um, I'm not going to trust this. This is going to give me an idiot light with a gauge that tells me how warm my engine is. I want to know how really warm it is, so I have an aftermarket water temperature um, input that goes to like a uh, autometer and that's going to wire into the exact same location that this guy is um, plumb in there there will be a NPT for both and they'll get rigged up uh, here's your oil pressure wire how can you get oil pressure with one wire it's a six pound switch whenever the engine is producing more than six pounds of pressure your gauge swings to roughly the middle so that you feel happy and you don't have any clue how much oil pressure you have. So for that, I've got an actual aftermarket gauge that was actually in this car. It was one of the few things the previous owner did that was really good. I will rig that so that it works. A similar thing. I'm going to take the switch out for the, the original stock Barra, um, which happens, it would fit with this plug, by the way. It's that close. Um, but I'm, I'm going to add... A, uh, an input to that so that this can hook right up to it. And I'll at the same time plumb up the the other sensor. So the bare PCM will get a ground at six pounds just like the V6 PCM did for this original car. And I'll have an oil pressure gauge, okay? And when the bare PCM sees that ground, so will my stock new edge see the ground and I will see the oil pressure up. And the only way I'll know the, the actual pressure is to look at the gauge. Now there's this foil covered wire here. You take apart your wiring um, for your, your Coyote, pardon me, your 4.6 or the V6, you will come up with this crank sensor wire, okay? And this guy is important. This guy is the thing that um, will, that you need to tap into to be able to have your tachometer work, okay? So I want that to tap into the same two wires that come off of the Barra um, crank sensor. Because it turns out it's 36 minus 1 teeth on the Barra, just like it is for a Coyote and a 4.6. But I'm not sure about a V6. I've got to do a little bit of research. I hope to God it is, because I don't want to have to get a different PCM and gauge cluster at this point in the game. All right, and then finally, I had them mislabeled, and thank goodness that Nathan uh, watched my video because he's like, dude, you got them reversed. Um, the transmission wiring harness is here. So Something I learned from Nathan, the transmission uh, wiring harness for a manual transmission has pins two and three looped together. Do you see them there? And... If you plug this in to your unplugged wire harness, if you've been having trouble getting your car to turn over, it's because these two pins need to be shorted. And I did that, and I was able to get my start request wire working. The other thing Nathan pointed out that I had wrong was I had my reverse lockout plug um, totally misidentified and swapped with my um, where are you at? Here it is, right here, down here. Hang on. This, this guy. Output speed sensor. See what that looks like? Now, TR6060 has a, a different connector here, but that signal is the same signal. 
and you can go on eBay and you can buy all three connectors for your TR56, T56, TR6060. There's a reverse lockout solenoid plug, a vehicle output speed sensor, and a reverse. Um, when the car goes into reverse, this, this goes shorted. And when these two are shorted, um, things like your backup lights light up, okay? Um, and Nathan points out to me, because I asked, like, why would they do this uh, thing with the uh, output speed sensor wiring where it goes through a wire that's really the reverse going through this second wire. It's a signal return wire, which is why these guys all go back through this. These are all O2 sensors <laughs> um, on this plug. It's a signal return, so they just saved the, the wiring at the factory is my guess. It's annoying, but I'm going to simplify all this wiring before I get it all done and Huh. For first start, it's just going to look like Frankenstein's monster, not like that's any different from anything else in this video series. So, that's how all that works. Um, let's briefly look at my TR6060 and its inputs, because here they are. Hang on. I have, ready, a... Well, who knows what that is. Gosh, I wish I knew. No, okay, output speed sensor here. Um... This is the right here if you can see it uh, The solenoid to prevent you from putting it in reverse at say 70 miles an hour because First second third fourth fifth six are all in line and then reverse It would be like where seventh gear is you just don't want to do that. And then finally here's our uh, Actual when you put the thing into reverse that thing goes live, okay? It, it shorts so you can see none of those plugs lines up that's no big deal because you can buy all three plugs for all these three different wires and you can just wire your own harness. It's not a big deal. There'll be a video on that too. But for first start, the main thing I need is none of these wires, so I don't care. I need that plugged in so that my get ready, my um, start request wire. Finally tracked down for real. It's that white pink wire on a V6. Might be the same way on a GT too, but I'm not sure. See that connector? That's your start request. That goes to the starter and activates the solenoid. Now, the reason I'm going to great lengths to point this out is because everybody struggles with this, like where all these wires are. And so not everybody's going to want to watch this video, but if you're doing a swap, you're going to watch this video and you're going to be like, okay, that helps me a great deal. All right. So don't know if you're paying attention, but the wiring isn't all that bad. Um, you mainly need this red and yellow wire. You need fuel, of course. This is for a first start. Okay. This constant wire should be hooked up. At some point you're going to want these three wires hooked up, but for first start, you're looking at really with the ground one, two, three, four, five wires. No big deal. For my first start, I can just run, I can get some of my trailer wiring, you know, I don't know if you know it, but you can buy 16 gauge, four uh, line wire that's got different colors. I can just run one of those through this hole and out to my Barrow PCM, which will sit roughly here, and I'll fire this thing up. Now, there is two more items before I do the first start. One is the wiring, obviously. Two and three are the plumbing for the Hydro Boost, which I've discussed in another video. That needs done, and I need a clutch, which I'm really close to doing. So if you're interested in the clutch, that's part two of my Tilton clutch video series. But that is the wiring. I've just covered it for the Barra, okay? And a new edge. But it's darn close to anything else you wire this thing up for. So this will probably help a lot of you that are trying to figure out just how to get started with one of these. Um, I have to say, uh, at the moment, the best person for running a stock PCM is Bill Hooten. Um, I'm doing my best to document some of the wiring just to help you guys, but um, I suspect eventually uh, Nathan Hensley will have 
a bead on this if enough people do bear swaps. Sees how the wiring between this and a coyote is not hugely different. Um, you need you need a PCM tune as well. I believe this one is tuned. We'll find out because I need to hook a tuner up to it anyway. And I've got another PCM I can compare tunes to. Anyways, hope this helps helps you. Um, this is going to be a rather lengthy video. However, I feel strongly that this is the kind of stuff nobody covers. They just, you know, took it to this shop. These guys wired it. It's all running. You know, great. Bully for you. I'm trying to figure out why mine won't start, you know. So as I come across weird things, I'm just going to do my best to document them for you. There is one last thing I, I do want to cover, which is one of these lines is for the pedal. I think this is ODB2. Let's see if this is the pedal. Yeah, here's the gas pedal. All right. That's a six wire lug and Bill Hooten has documented that as well. And when I got my engine delivered by Chris Neves of Neves Speed Shop, he gave me a pedal. And I was initially not going to use it, but there's a nice feature about this pedal, which is I can make a bracket and weld it to my pedal box. Um, pedal box is coming along. There'll be a separate video for that too. But for now, um, for first start, I'm going to need this pedal box hooked up. And I'm also going to need, um, going to want the uh, slave and master cylinder for the hydraulic clutch hooked up. So I got to finish my pedal box. But anyways, um, definitely Frankenstein's monster. And we have got so much going on here. Um, I just wanted to catch you all up to speed uh, and show you where I'm at with the wiring. And also make a fairly detailed video on the wiring. Uh, it would be great for me to have some of these pinouts documented, so I'm going to work on that as well. This won't be like my Coyote Swap. Once I have the wiring harness working, I'm going to pull it out and document every pin. So, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to, to subscribe. Tell your friends. Um, if you have a friend that's like, how the heck do I get started with this wiring? You might want to send them this way. Uh, all the stuff I've covered here is almost identical for a coyote swap for what it's worth in a new edge um, And it's it's interesting to me. So hope you're enjoying the ride. Thanks for